Hello, everyone. Um, I know I'm sure a lot of you are back at school, so so excited excited to see your faces. Um, but basically, we have an amazing crew with us today. And if we go to the next slide, we'll do some introductions. Perfect. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Kevin Baldwin. I've been with um, Deloitte for the past two years. Um, I've recently been promoted um, to a senior consultant where I serve in the cyber risk advisory um, team or practice within Deloitte. Um, super excited to be back with tech. Um, sad to, that this has to be virtual. Um, I love Blacksburg, but again, uh, super excited to be here. Hey guys, my name is Kelsey Hill. Um, I've been with Deloitte for coming up on a year now, graduated May 2019, and I'm in the consulting federal practice. And like Steve, like Kevin said, very excited to be here and get to talk to all of you guys. Hey guys, my name is Emily Kaiser. I've been with Deloitte actually next week will be my three year anniversary. I graduated from undergrad at tech in 2016 and then graduate school in 2017. Senior consultants in the cyber risk advisory practice, more specifically in data privacy. Um, just as everyone else said, um, you know, really excited to be a part of this team. Unfortunately, we won't be down there this semester, um, but go Hokies. Did we get Steven to join yet? I'm not sure. I can go. <laughs> um, hey everyone, I'm Kinsey Donovan. Um, similar to Kelsey, I graduated last May 2019, um, started with the firm in September 2019, so coming up on one year. Um, and then I also am within the consulting practice for um, government public services. Um, so Steven, if you're on. Yeah, looks like he is. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry about that. I'd I forgot I was double muted, but um, yeah, Stephen Reichart, uh, manager with Deloitte. I've been with the firm for going into my eighth year. Um, started on the commercial uh, assurance and internal control side, starting in Richmond. Since transferring up to Northern Virginia, joining the federal practice two years ago. Um, currently supporting uh, United States Postal Service um, in their IT SOX compliance mission. Hey y'all, um, my name is Kelsey Donnelly. I am a tax manager in obviously our Deloitte tax practice, um, mainly focusing in multi-state, um, large corporate engagement taxation. I've uh, been with the firm for five years and I also graduated from Virginia Tech in 2015. Awesome. We can go to the next slide. And for everyone, um, my name is Kristen Chase, I said at the beginning, but I am the campus recruiter when it comes to advisory, audit, and tax. And Maxie Keeler is my counterpart, and she is the recruiter for consulting. So if you see our names on campus, definitely feel free to reach out. Um, so the topics today, we are going to go over our Deloitte functions as a whole, all of our different businesses. We'll talk a little bit about career exploration and figuring the right niche from your, for yourself. Um, go into resumes, a little bit about elevator pitches, elevator pitches, and then um, exactly how to own your runway within the virtual network and virtual interviewing. And then we'll talk about our opportunities. So passing it over to Kevin for the first slide. Perfect. Uh, let's get started here. So Deloitte breaks down into four distinct functions within the firm. Um, each is a distinct function in and of itself, and it, it provides a different professional service um, to various clients, really helping serve in the day-to-day -day operations of the firm. Um, so as you can see, uh, the four main functions are your, your audit, so that's really examining financial records um, for companies, just verifying the accuracy of those financial records, um, as well as you have Deloitte Consulting. Uh, Deloitte Consulting is really just a, it's a broad, broad range, uh, really covers everything from uh, strategy and an analytics to um, operational transformation. Um, keep this high level for now, um, but then moving forward to tax. Um, tax is providing uh, companies, organizations, um, help um, providing knowledge to help navig navigate the, the complex and ever-changing uh, tax landscape. And then finally, we have advisory. So advisory, much like Deloitte Consulting, is also, it's very broad. Um, that's actually where uh, it's the core function that I assist Deloitte with. Um, it breaks down everywhere from cyber risk to um, internal audit. And then 
Uh, I know I'm keeping it pretty high level here, um, but if, if any of you have any questions over maybe the more uh, nitty gritty specifics of each one of these core functions, uh, please feel free just to, to save that question and during the Q&A at the end, we will uh, definitely be able to help address any of your questions. Perfect. So, uh, what, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. So, um, uh, so with this slide, it's, it's really as you sit there as a, as a tech student, you want to start to think about um, your future. Uh, I mean, what you want to do uh, post grad. So, I mean, attending these these uh, Zoom calls with with companies is a great great first start. Um, but as you start to explore your options, you want to think about like what are your strengths skills, values, and passions. Um, I know that this is something that um, I was doing as a tech student and I'm even continuing to do uh, within the firm. Um, so I guess as a great example, a year ago um, within my individual uh, team, client team that I'm working with, um, we had a session where we worked on what are your strengths? So with these questions you see on the, on the right side of the, the PowerPoint, it's like, what are you strength, strengthened by? Uh, where are you at your best? Um, and you want to start to explore some of these because um, once you figure out what you want to do um, and what you look forward to doing, you're really going to start to develop um, some of your skills, your strengths, um, and it's really going to help build you into your career. So um, again, you want to learn about what are your strengths, how to differentiate yourself versus um, your peers with those strengths, and then um, your career, you're going to continue to develop. So just starting to internalize some of these questions is a great first step. Um, and then I guess trend, moving forward to playing your strengths is um, once you realize what you like doing, you want to pursue a career in it, whether um, it be in maybe data visualization, uh, public speaking, um, or whatnot, you really want to just move yourself into a career where you will be successful based on what you enjoy doing, what your strengths are. So. Um, if you have troubles figuring out what your strengths are, um, reach out to friends, professors, uh, parents, people you've worked with in the past. Um, they are a great first step in, in really realizing um, what you are truly good at because they're dealing with you and working with you um, firsthand. Um, and then again, it's pairing yourself with people that have strengths that you might not be the strongest in. So. Um, for instance, I love, I, I said data visualization earlier, but I, that's something I'm passionate about and I might not be as inclined to publicly speak, whereas some absolutely just enjoy it. So pairing yourself with those going forward is um, going to help not only develop yourself, but make the team that you work with even more successful. And then I'll pause right now, but um, just a, a great blurb just to keep, or just to think about and, and write down maybe is just the strength of something that you're excited to do, something that really energizes you. Um, and finding those strengths is key to um, a, a, just a great career and, and just finding opportunities that you enjoy doing for the rest of your life. And then um, with this, it's, it's understanding what your strengths are compared to what your skills are. So again, it's, those strengths are something that come to you naturally. It's something that when you wake up, you're, you're already good at it. Um, whereas skills are something that you can continue to, to work on and improve on. Um, and, and, and finding those and, and understanding the differences between the two is, is super important to uh, not only a career with Deloitte, but um, any company that you may be working with in the future. Um, and a key, what I like to do uh, again through the client and, my time with the client and how I've been working is putting yourself in situations where you can really develop those skills. So uh, some of my strengths are, have already been developed and it's, I'm continuing to use them from day to day, but uh, maybe public speaking, this is a great opportunity or example here where uh, putting yourself in that position to sort of uh, flex, so to speak, flex those public speaking skills and really continue to develop them, uh, whether it be uh, your, your business writing, uh, effective communication, public speaking, um, problem solving, is really learning about what do you need to get stronger in and then uh, putting yourself in situations where you can continue um, 
to develop them. And that, that kind of stems into the, where do you go from here? So again, uh, it's recognizing what you want to get better at, what, um, what are your strengths and skills? I know that I said that a couple of times now, but uh, it's recognizing those and then using this time um, in your undergraduate career just to um, fine tune those. Um, no, we're not expecting anyone to be perfect. I know I'm definitely not perfect, but it's, it's building those skills and then putting yourself in a position where um, you'll make yourself more successful because um, again, we are a professional, we, we, we work with the clients and it's um, how we can provide um, the best service possible. All right, moving into the resume portion of the presentation. So an extremely important part of networking, finding the right job, the interview process is obviously your resume. Um, there are actually many times, especially now in this virtual environment, when you may not be able to speak to someone about your qualifications. And I know even here at Tech, uh, many companies will actually be able to see your resume before you meet with them. So it's important to get this right. Just so you guys can read through the slide, but I'll mention some things that are on here too. Um, your resume should be limited to um, one page with about a 10 to 12 point font. Um, it should be concise while still, still getting all of your information across. Um, it is meant to get your foot in the door, so you want to make sure it is super engaging. It is typically made up of four to five sections. The first one is your contact information, which includes obviously your full name, your mailing address, your email address, and your phone number. The, the a resume typically doesn't always have to, it's sometimes it's optional depending on um, kind of where you're, who you're submitting the resume to. Um, you might want to uh, include an objective statement. Um, again, it, you might want to include it on some versus others. Um, if you do a kind of a fluffy, or I'm gonna call it a fluffy objective statement, um, that actually may be detrimental to your resume. So you wanna make sure it's very pointed um, to what you are uh, or who you are submitting your resume to. Obviously, you need to include your education. So the formal name of your college or university, so Virginia Polytechnic Institute. Um, the date you expect to graduate, the, your academic areas of focus, and your overall GPA. You want to include some of your experiences um, that you've either faced in college, or it could be an internship, externship, it could be group projects, it could be even high school jobs that you guys had. And then uh, additional sections that you may want to include um, if you have the room are any things like awards, hobbies, interests, and clubs. One thing I will say, you're sending your resume um, to anyone via email, you want to make sure you are using a professional email. The name of your resume should be um, given a name that is associated with you. So for example, um, we have De internal Deloitte profiles and we have to update our resume every six months. And the name of my resume is Emily Kaiser underscore resume 2020. So it has my name associated with it. And that you want this because the person you're sending your resume to could actually forward your resume on to somebody else. So you want to make sure it is associated back to you. If you're emailing your resume, it's always helpful to first email that to some, the resume to somebody else just to make sure the formatting stays the same, nothing changes. And along with that format, you want to make sure the best way to email it is through a PDF. So a lot of those changes are not able to occur. This semester, again, everything is very virtual. You will be able to submit your resume electronically. So don't worry about that. Last thing I will mention for this slide is um, that has, has to do with the experience section of a resume. Um, we know that many internships and, ex internships and externships were canceled this past summer due to the coronavirus. Um, don't you worry, companies are aware of what's going on. Um, you wanna make sure you do highlight your experiences through your class projects, organizations, and other activities. Um, if you are in another networking event, or if you are offered um, to interview with a company or Deloitte, 
you want to make sure you then highlight if you did have an externship or internship lined up. We can move to the next slide. Thank you. So there are five general guidelines um, or steps you should take to tailor your resume based on what you are interested in. The first step is really analyzing the job description that you are applying for, for important keywords that you can actually leverage in your resume. Step two is to create a list of your accomplishments to include. So as I mentioned on the slide before, it's anything education, training, volunteering, internships, externships, large projects, clubs, or organizations. Step three is to mention any relevant skills. Um, I always ask myself, can I speak about this accomplishment, skill, and or experience and relate it back to the job or the company? And if the answer to that is yes, then it, it may be a good thing to include on your resume. Step four is to make sure your resume includes descriptive phrases to describe those experiences and to describe your skills. And then step five is just choosing your overall format. So ask, uh, ask yourself if it makes sense to organize the resume chronologically or by skill or a combination. And the last thing I'm gonna say, which I actually think is the most important tip that we can provide, is that you wanna try and make your accomplishments measurable and your skills transferable. So many students struggle with properly highlighting their impact um, or identifying trans transferable skills to highlight from jobs that are not quote, professional services. Um, you can pull a lot of relevant skills from those jobs that you may not think are applicable. So an example of that would be if you lifeguarded in high school or in the summer or whenever, or you worked as a cashier. So if I worked as a cashier, instead of writing on my resume, I served as a cashier, you could say something along, along the lines of, I manage X sales, or I served X customers per day. And as a lifeguard, you could say something along the lines of, I managed 400 member, for a 400 member swimming facility and honed communication skills, or maintain organized records for 35 employees utilizing database systems. So I know those are kind of far, far stretched, but like I said, there's, all, there's a lot of skills that you may not realize that you've, um, you've gained from non-service um, related jobs or work. So you definitely want to highlight those things um, and speak to them in any of your essays. I'll pass it on to Kelsey. Awesome, thanks Emily. So going hand in hand with your resume is also your elevator pitch. And traditionally this is when you first step up to a recruiter during Business Horizons, for example. This is your first introduction to who you are, what you're looking for, and why you may be a good fit for that company. And so this is a really important thing to consider because this is how you not only grab their attention just with your communication skills, it also introduces yourself and can lead where the conversation is going to go next. So before this, you would typically do it face to face, but the elevator pitch, even in a virtual setting, is still very important because you can now incorporate your elevator pitch if you're emailing your resume into your email content, which is the body of your email and how you want to communicate to a recruiter. Otherwise, during your virtual interview, networking events, or even information sessions. This is when you can still do that and while it's face-to-face -face over camera, you'll still be using that skill to communicate just what you want out of this conversation. So a couple overall tips just with your elevator pitch to keep in mind is first just to keep it around two to three minutes long. It's considered an elevator pitch because it's the time it would take when you enter an elevator and go up. So it's very brief, but it continues to build upon each foundation so that way, by the end of your elevator pitch, a recruiter has a general idea of who you are and they can start to dive in on deeper on different topics or skills that you talked about. Also, you don't want to guide the entire conversation that you have with just your elevator pitch. Next, also your elevator pitch, keep in mind that it can set you apart from other candidates. So this is really your two to three minutes to shine and you can highlight just what skills you specifically want to talk about. And so you'll have a whole page long resume of information, but you can pick a couple things from your resume to include in your elevator pitch to then highlight and talk about. Next up is also to, your elevator pitch is usually more casual, less formal, 
and you want to avoid the fluffy business jargon because that's normally what's on your resume and that's what's going to look really nice. But then next is your elevator pitch, the chance to speak to everything that you've done and keep it in easy terms that both of you will be able to understand and talk about more. And then finally, it's just tone of voice for sure. Now that everything, whether this was face-to-face -face or virtual, you should be proud and excited about everything that you're talking about in your elevator pitch because these are all the accomplishments that you've achieved and also what you're looking to do in the future. So keeping your tone energized, excited about why you want to do this will definitely keep recruiters engaged as well and want to bring you further into the conversation to talk about where you could go next. A couple of talking points just to think about incorporating into your elevator pitch are over here on the side. They just range from what your strengths may be, which we touched on earlier, where you could see yourself in five years, and then what's been your like best position that you've been in or just strongest skill that you would like to talk about and where you could see that applying in a real world setting. And so the best way to kind of work on your elevator pitch is you want to practice it, but you also don't want to practice it to the point where it becomes very intoned. And that's kind of going off of your tone of voice where you don't want to be sounding like you're reciting a script. So know the general points that you want to touch on but don't feel like you need to know every single word that you're about to be saying. So moving forward into owning the runway and as a whole, it's just for your day type of mentality. So that means based on what type of conversation or event you're going into, you want to address how will make, what will make you feel the most confident and energized going into these. But overall, we do have like three more general categories based on the type of session that you're going to be attending. So first there's smart casual, and this is considered the more relaxed. You could wear jeans, generally nicer jeans though, no holes, rips, frayed edges. So it's still overall a very put together look that you're presenting, but it's going to be much more casual. And so this would be used for networking sessions or general information sessions. One step up from smart casual is your business casual. And so this is still goes along in the same theme of a crisp, neat, pulled together look, but it's a little bit nicer where on the off chance you may be talking, for example, with like the CEO. So it's something that you wouldn't be like, oh no, what am I wearing right now? If you're gonna go into that conversation potentially, but it's also still an overall put together look just for your networking information sessions. And it's a good way to kind of incorporate some of your nicer business tops, blouses with still jeans or more casual look. Also as a whole, it's good to keep in mind that for any session, regardless of what it is, it is definitely better to overdress than underdress. No one will look at you for being the most dressed up person in the room, but definitely, especially as you go more towards the interviews, wearing a t-shirt will not help you present your um, strongest foot forward and give you the most confident feeling. And then finally, we just have business formal. And these are gonna be your career fairs, business horizons, and your interviews for full-time or internship positions. And this just goes along with theme, look good, feel good, and where you would break out suits, pants, professional dresses, skirts, whatever you feel that will help you to really shine in your interview and present a very professional pulled together look. All right, now I'll pass it off next. Talk about virtual networking. Thanks, Chelsea. Um, so going into obviously the changes in this new virtual world, um, I think it's now more important than ever that you have a complete solid um, online profile um, because in most scenarios, this is gonna be kind of the first impression that you're making on recruiters and um, full-time practitioners, anyone that you're trying to connect with. Um, so in on that subject, I think we have this starting list of fields and um, kind of things that you should make sure that you have filled out on your profile. Um, and this could be applicable to Handshake, um, other recruiting tools, LinkedIn, et cetera. Um, anywhere that you're kind of interacting in a professional setting. Um, so obviously all of these are important, but just to kind of highlight a, a couple that I think will help you stand out. So 
the skills section, um, I think this is a really unique area for you to kind of highlight what you have done and and um, what can help you stand out. So whether that's any, you know, um, anything from I, I think especially in like high school and things that may not necessarily translate professionally, you can use the skill section to kind of highlight anything you got out of that. Um, and then also just a, a random fact I learned the other day. So on LinkedIn specifically, um, if you have at least five skills on your profile, you are 31 times more likely to show up in search results um, and news feeds and that kind of thing to um, not only recruiters, but anyone that you might be trying to interact with. So definitely kind of an overlooked field that I think is very beneficial. Um, also, obviously work experience is very important. Um, and I think this goes further than just listing what you've done. I think it's also trying to kind of convey some of those key resume points if you have room on your profile or, or if it gives you the option. Um, and just, you know, call out some of the key impact areas that you were able to make while you were in that experience. Um, and also just to highlight, I know this past summer, a lot of you probably had internships that may have gone virtual or co-ops that may have gone virtual or that kind of thing. Don't think that you need to exclude those because those are absolutely still important and still an experience that you, you know, put time and effort into. Um, so make sure that you're still listing those on your profile and calling out any experience that you were able to make within those opportunities. Um, don't just think that, you know, oh, it got moved online. It's not um, as important anymore. So definitely make sure to list those. Um, and then I think also something that's not necessarily listed explicitly here, but if you, let's say, I know, I know a lot of people um, kind of had a little bit extra time the summer or like last semester um, and completed some trainings or certifications or anything like that. I think it's super important to call that, that out too if you're able in your profile, um, just because it'll show that you know you took initiative to pursue things that you were interested in and kind of took advantage of the extra time that you were given while being virtual or being at home um, or that kind of thing. So Kelsey, if you wanna go to the next slide. All right, so when it comes to the actual networking portion, obviously it's very different this recruiting season since we can't meet in person, but I definitely think that there's still a lot of options to be able to make connections with people um, in this virtual world. So kind of starting on like the bottom left of this globe uh, visual we have here. So um, definitely utilize all the search features that are available on these different platforms, um, whether that's searching for, you know, um, different locations, companies, um, specific people, different industries you're um, looking to kind of break into, all of those different areas. Um, I mean, there's so many, I know LinkedIn especially has so many different, um, you know, filters and things that you can use to kind of narrow down who you're trying to reach out to. Um, and then moving up, actually making that connection. Um, you know, I think LinkedIn, and I'll, I'll keep harping on LinkedIn just because it's the one I know the most, but any of these, um, don't hesitate to reach out to people even if you don't necessarily have a specific connection to them. Um, I think even, you know, when you're sending out that connection request, you can include a personalized message saying, hey, I saw that you're in this field. I'm very interested in getting involved in that. Um, I would love to, you know, set up a virtual coffee chat or connect with you in any means if you are available or um, any sort of like advice you can give me um, would be awesome. You know, I think even adding that personal message just goes a long way rather than just, you know, saying, please connect with me. Um, and it also just takes it a step further since we don't have the opportunity to kind of just go up and start talking with someone at a networking event. Um, really taking advantage of the tools that we have on these platforms is super crucial um, these days. And then on kind of the more social media side of these platforms, I think, you know, the more that you are creating content, sharing content that you're interested in, liking people's posts, um, commenting even like a congratulations if someone got an internship or that kind of thing. Um, the more that you interact with other people on a platform, the more that you're going to be um, 
more visible you'll be to others that you may not actually have a formal connection with. Um, and let's say that, you know, a recruiter of a company you're interested in sees that you commented on someone's post, like interacting with them, even that familiarity later on, if they see your resume, will help kind of trigger um, a good reaction. Um, if they've seen that you're, you know, engaged and interested on whether it's LinkedIn, Handshake, et cetera. Um, and then finally, just, uh, you know, I said LinkedIn has specific, a lot of specific groups. I think there's like a Virginia Tech group. I know there's like industry groups. There's, there's tons of different things that you can actually join on that platform just to um, interact and network with people who are in those areas that you're interested in. Um, and then you can, you know, use the hashtags that people use on their posts kind of as a quasi search filter um, just to get more information on this area as well as find other people that would be beneficial to connect with. Um, so definitely a little bit of adjustment. I know, I feel like a lot of people have already been using LinkedIn um, before we all went virtual, but I think it's just kind of trying to take advantage of these virtual platforms and, and all the options that they have available now that we are solely relying on um, these virtual tools now. So with that, I will pass it over to Stephen for virtually interviewing. Thank you very much. Yes, the virtual world of interviewing. I believe I will be finding myself here in the October timeframe actually conducting some of these interviews with um, Virginia Tech students in general. So maybe this will be the, uh, the first of another meeting to come. So um, it, it is a new landscape for us and we're all working through it, right? I think a lot of this is pretty straightforward and I can already see that some of you are, you know, in line and taking advantage of these, you know, helpful hints, but a couple of key things right away. I mean, make sure that you're big thing in a quiet area, good internet connection. Um, I, I've actually done some interviews on the internal side with Deloitte teams where maybe an individual was at a lake house or a river house, more in a remote area with um, maybe not as good as a connection. So, I've seen the effects of it, how it can play out and, and little things like that. I wouldn't want something like that to interrupt or inter intervene with your interview process. So um, take the time ahead of your interview, think through where you wanna be, what kind of environment, a nice quiet place, whether maybe it could be the library, uh, if your apartment is too loud, if you have loud roommates or anything like that, but um, make sure, uh, I think we're looking for business attire, business professional, nothing new here. Now that's virtual. Um, I know. I know. Up top, we see the shirts. Um, I'm guilty of it a little bit here. I got gym shorts on now, but a collared shirt. So I'll, I'll leave the the top portion to the um, to the call out here. Make sure. I mean, shirt and tie for guys. Um, what have you on the girl side as well? Um, business professional. So I know we do accommodate, and if there are issues, um, if you're if you have any limitations ahead of time. Um, I'm sure we can find a way to work around it if a phone call is a solution versus a, a actual virtual interview. So um, we're flexible. If there are issues or you foresee any kind of concerns, uh, contact your recruiter and they can kind of figure out an alternative route there for you. Yeah, good for the next slide here. So during the interview, again, a lot of this is guys carrying over if it was in person versus virtual. Um, make sure good posture, good eye contact. Um, if you have questions ahead of time or if you're taking notes, make sure your notes are readily available. Um, it, 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 even though it's virtual, it should just be very similar to an in-person interview, conversational based. Um, arrive early, make sure that you are squared away from uh, an internet perspective, squared away, arriving early, just as you, you would in person um, on campus at Tech. So, um, I know it can be intimidating. I know it's different. I know there's nerves always, no matter what, before an interview, but uh, I mean, don't let the virtual aspects really bring in anything new. It's just a conversation. Um, so nothing new there, guys. And fingers crossed, I didn't overspeak there, Kristen, but I hope you did uh, You did take me for, for interviews in October. So um, I'm looking forward to hopefully talking to some of you guys in a couple months. Awesome. Thank you, Stephen. Um, so basically additional opportunities where we think that you all can get connected. Um, first and foremost, um, I know we're gonna be having a lot of events and we're gonna be meeting you on campus or on campus, 
keep saying that. Um, but just definitely find a way when you talk to uh, practitioners, make sure you're connecting on LinkedIn and creating those one-on-one -on -one connections. You can um, set up time to talk to practitioners one-on-one -on -one just to learn more about the questions that you may have. Um, one program that we have is Deep One-on-One, -on -one, so I'm gonna actually pass it over to Emily for a second to talk a little bit more about that program. Yes, thank you, Kristen. Um, the Deloitte, the D one on one program that we have is um, basically a time where you can connect with a Deloitte practitioner one on one, obviously virtually this this year, um, and it's really just a time for you to talk to them about anything you really want to, whether it's about Deloitte, whether it's about career advice, um, navigating this virtual environment. Um, you could receive some resume and interview tips. Um, navigating the impact of COVID-19. It's really whatever you would like to discuss with them. Um, obviously, it's gotta be a professional conversation. Um, but like I said, this is really a unique opportunity because this could be um, almost like a pre-interview. We could really get to know you. We, they could have great things to say about you. So you could really get to know um, a Deloitte practitioner one-on-one -on -one, um, and they could provide additional um, feedback on you if you do apply for a position at Deloitte. So I think Kristen actually just put the link into the chat box here. Um, that's where you can click on the link and you'll actually fill out a survey. Just a few questions about your name, um, when you're graduating, what you would like to pursue. And then what we will do on the back end is we will pair you with a Deloitte practitioner based on other additional things, what they're focused on um, from the Deloitte perspective. So um, I suggest doing it. It's a really great opportunity. We could do, I mean, it says on here, a, a virtual coffee chat. So maybe we could do, we could have coffee, you could have coffee. I don't know. We can make it fun <laughs> somehow. So um, definitely fill out the survey if you are interested. Awesome. Thank you, Emily. Um, so yeah, I put two links. I have um, the link just for registration again, if you haven't registered to this event, and also the D one-on-one -on -one survey. So both links are in the chat. Make sure you complete those if you're interested. Um, so the next thing that we wanted to talk about additional opportunities, um, there's a lot of professional organizations out there, um, including us, that have a lot of different um, links and events going on, as well as tips regarding networking um, virtually. So definitely join those professional organizations, learn more from the different um, you know, information that they have. And if you have any questions regarding Deloitte tips and tricks, you can definitely reach out to me. Uh, and then last but not least, definitely attend virtual events. We're gonna be having virtual events. Obviously there's a lot of career fairs and events being put on about by Virginia Tech as well as organizations on campus. So definitely attend when possible. It's a great way to meet people face-to-face -face virtually. And um, it's definitely a way for us to show, to show that you're passionate about the roles we have as well as just learn general information that you're gonna to want to know. So those are just some additional opportunities. If we go to the next slide, I can talk a little bit more about staying in touch with us. So uh, we have our Instagram tag there. We also have more information about the one-on-one -on -one if you're interested, the um, link is in the chat. Um, you can also contact us at vtrecruiting@deloitte.com. As I said, I'm the tax advisory and audit recruiter, so that's my information. And then Maxi Keeler is the recruiter for consulting. Uh, we have a couple of key dates on the side. I won't go into too much detail. Just know that all information regarding um, different events that we're hosting, as well as our different interviews, will be on Handshake. Um, all positions should be posted on Handshake by the end, beginning of September. Excuse me. So definitely keep an eye out for those. And if you have any questions um, specific to different positions, definitely reach out to me or Maxi. Um, but we're planning on having most of our deadlines be at the end of September. So make sure you're um, applying on Handshake. You have to be applying on Handshake to be considered. And then our interviews will fall in the October timeframe. Uh, and then just for your awareness, I know we're gonna be sharing um, our information sheet with um, Hannah and other leaders within Pamplin, um, as well as some of you who have come to previous events. But basically, it's just an info page with all of our different opportunities, as well as events that we're hosting on campus and will be attending. We're basically attending all the major career fairs, um, so ready to hit the ground running with Brazen, 
Um, and then also we'll be hosting a careers and accounting night as well as a Deloitte Expo where you can learn more about the different um, businesses and talk to our practitioners one-on-one. -on -one. 